In today's episode, we are diving into the story of a brand that started as a copy of Uber in India and then boldly diversified into the electric two-wheeler market, becoming a market leader in record time. But this brand's journey has been anything but smooth. Get ready as we unravel the controversial rise of Ola. Without further ado, let's begin. Ola was founded by Bhavish Agarwal and Ankit Bhati in December 2010, originally as a trip planning company called olatrips.com, serving in the Delhi region. Like many startups, this was just a stepping stone before they launched their main product. In January 2011, spotting the growing demand on for on-demand cabs, Agarwal and Bharti pivoted to Ola Cabs, a taxi aggregation service. There is an interesting story that Bhavish decided to start Ola after a terrible experience with a cab driver who left him stranded mid-journey on his way from Bangalore to Pandipur. At this point, Uber hadn't entered the Indian market, giving Ola a crucial first mover advantage. Initially, Ola bookings were done via phone, but by 2012, they had launched their mobile app which set the stage for their rapid growth. By early 2015, Ola had captured the largest market share ahead of its competitors like Taxi for Sure, Meru Cabs, and Uber, which was launched in India in 2013. In March 2015, Ola acquired Taxi for Sure for 1237 crore, which is about 200 million US dollars, integrating its services into the Ola app by June. By August, Ola was operating in over 100 cities and had transitioned to an app-only service. In 2015, Ola ventured into new territories with Ola Store, a grocery service in Bangalore, but it was short-lived, shutting down in March 2016. They attempted to make a comeback in 2021 and 2022 by launching nine dark stores for quick grocery deliveries, but ultimately this too was shelved by June 2022. Ola also tried its hand in the food delivery segment by acquiring Food Panda India in December 2017 aiming to tap into the growing market although Food Panda was once a big player it eventually fizzled out with Ola shutting down the business temporarily before rebranding as Ola Foods in 2024 under the ONDC initiative Ola even launched a bike sharing service in December 2017 which was a hit on IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras campuses but it seems to have disappeared from the spotlight since then as ola expanded internationally more than 10000 drivers applied ahead of its london launch in 2019 by february 2020 ola had launched its taxi hailing service in london with over 25000 registered drivers despite the challenges ola posted its first ever operating profit of 90 crore which is around 11 million us dollars in the financial year of 2020 21 However, in April 2024, Ola made a surprising move by pulling out of all international markets, including the UK, Australia, and New Zealand, within a, within just a few days of notice. Ola's journey has been far from smooth. From billing and payment issues to controversial surge pricing, the company has faced its share of backlash. Customers have voiced their frustration over technical glitches, misleading price practices, and a lack of proper customer support. Moreover, Ola and Uber have been criticized for their treatment of drivers who are classified as contractors rather than employees, sparking debates about workers' rights. With the rise of competitors like Rapido and Namayatri, which operate on a subscription-based model rather than commissions, Ola and Uber have been forced to adapt, switching to a subscription model where drivers pay a monthly fee rather than a hefty commission. Ola Electric was born in 2017 as a wholly owned subsidiary of ANI Technologies, the parent company of Ola Cabs. This move was a strategic play to reduce emissions and fuel dependency for Ola's fleet, shifting towards mass electric mobility. The journey began in Nagpur with a pilot program in May 2017, where they set up charging stations across the city and introduced electric cabs, buses, and rickshaws through partnerships with OEMs. This was Ola's first step into a future they were determined to lead. By February 2019, Ola Electric had caught the eye of major investors, raising a significant 56 million US dollars from Tiger Global and Matrix India. The momentum didn't stop there. On May 6, 2019, the company made headlines when Ratan Tata himself invested an undisclosed amount as part of Ola Electric's Series A funding. Then came the game-changing moment in July 2019. 
when Ola Electric raised 250 million US dollars from SoftBank during its Series B round, pushing its valuation over the coveted $1 billion mark. In May 2020, Ola Electric made a strategic move by acquiring Etergo, an Amsterdam-based electric scooter manufacturer, in a distressed sale for 3.75 million euros. This acquisition laid the groundwork for Ola to announce its own line of scooters in India, aiming for a 2021 launch. December 2020 marked a bold new chapter as Ola Electric unveiled plans to build the world's largest two-wheeler factory, dubbed the Future Factory in Tamil Nadu, at a cost of Rs. 2,400 crore, which is approximately 324 million US dollars. By January 2021, they had secured a 500-acre plot in Pochampalli, Krishnagiri district, and the construction was in full swing by late February. The anticipation around Ola Electric scooters reached a fever pitch with a staggering 500,000 bookings in the first month alone. Come December 2021, Ola Electric began delivering its S1 and S1 Pro models, with the first 100 scooters hitting the streets of Bengaluru and Chennai. However, not everything was smooth sailing. Some promised features were missing in the initial deliveries, which stirred some concerns. Now, Bhavish Agarwal had set his sights on a far more ambitious goal to have Ola Electric Mobility Private Limited outpace Elon's, Elon Musk's Tesla and China's BYD by creating a niche in affordable electrical vehicle designs. But this relentless ambition came, came at a cost. Agarwal's intense pace and demanding management style have raised eyebrows among managers and board members alike. Safety concerns, supply chain issues and delays have plagued the company, leading to slower sales. Customers have voiced serious complaints about scooters catching fire, faulty batteries and accident-causing software, all of which prompted product recalls and public apologies on Twitter. Now X. The internal turbulence doesn't stop there. Around three dozen senior executives across Ula Electric and ANI Technologies have left within a year or two of joining a turnover rate that is notably higher than industry peers. One particularly alarming incident that occurred in March 2022 when a, was when a scooter caught fire in Pune. This prompted Ola Electric to recall a batch of 1,441 scooters in April as a preemptive measure to ensure safety. In June 2022, Ola Electric teased its first ever electric sedan, stirring excitement in the market. However, two years later, the company made the tough decision to scrap its electric car plans, choosing instead to double down on electric scooters and motorcycles. Despite the setbacks, Ola Electric is not slowing down. In July 2022, CEO Bhavish Agarwal announced the construction of the Battery Innovation Centre (BIC) in Bangalore, said to be Asia's largest cell R&D facility, with a hefty investment of 500 million US dollars. Then, on August 15, 2024. Ola Electric unveiled the prototype of its first electric motorcycle series, aptly named Roadster, slated for launch in three variants by 2025. During this same event, they also introduced the Bharat Battery Cell, a made-in-India innovation that Ola claims offers five times more energy density than current 2170 cells. But Ola isn't just sticking to the electric vehicle space. They have ambitious plans to enter the booming quick commerce market a space dominated by players like Blinkit, Zepto, Instamart, and Flipkart Minutes. However, Ola's approach is different. They are eyeing the industry with a during a gold rush sell shovels strategy. Instead of directly competing, Ola plans to establish multiple dark stores, which they will then lease out to these quick commerce giants, raking in profits without getting their hands dirty in the fierce competitions. Ola also have launched their own AI. Um, model which they call Krutrim and they plan to expand it even more and Krutrim also uh, and Ola has also seemingly moved away from Azure and they are uh, they've moved all their data to Krutrim and they, Bhavish Agarwal seems to be, be making a lot of claims about AI in the future so that remains to be seen so that was the story of Ola rife with controversy but also a testament to the power of relentless ambition and innovation it is the tale of a determined entrepreneur building a global powerhouse right here in India. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to hear from you. Drop a message on Instagram and let us know what you think of this episode.
YouTube thinks this video right here will be the best one for you to watch next. So click here and I'll meet you there.